All right, it looks like it's uh, 10 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, uh, welcome everyone to the Introduction to RAD Scheduler for WinForms webinar. First off, my name is Robert Shumate. I'm a Developer Support Specialist here at Telerik, and I specialize in the RAD controls for WinForms and Telerik reporting. So if you've had a question early on in your Telerik experience, and perhaps you've uh, posted it to the forums or maybe submitted it to the sales team, uh, then it's probably gotten forwarded to me at some point, and maybe we've had some communication in the past. Uh, I have a blog available at blogs.telerik.com slash Robert Shoemate, uh, and there I tend to post many WinForms related things and Telerik reporting uh, things. And most recently, I've started a series of blog posts on uh, social networking APIs. So if you're uh, interested in that or you're maybe dabbling that on the side as a hobby, uh, it might be interesting for you to check those out. And I'm also available on Twitter at ShoeRob. So a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to start out by giving you an introduction to RAD Scheduler. I'm going to show you uh, its features and we're going to take a look at the Quick Start framework and see a few demo applications. And then uh, following that, we're going to learn a little bit about data binding techniques, different ways to bind database or business objects to RAD Scheduler. And then following that, I'm going to show you how to customize RAD Scheduler. Uh, say you have a custom field in your database and you want to be able to show that inside of the Edit Appointment dialog for RAD Scheduler. Uh, I'll show you how to do that today. And then uh, after that, I'll show you a few learning resources you can use to get started. And then uh, we'll do a little Q&A. So if you have any questions or think of anything uh, feel free to write those down or uh, go ahead and actually post them into the question log and I'll get to those near the end of the webinar. So what is RAD Scheduler for WinForms? Well at its most basic level it's just a it's an Outlook style scheduling component that allows you to organize and present appointments in a, in a nice organized Outlook style way and it features a familiar interface uh, uh, obviously, many companies use Outlook in their organizations, and uh, if, if users in your company are familiar with using the calendar in Outlook, uh, then they'll be very familiar with using RAD Scheduler. Uh, it features multiple view modes. Uh, it's highly customizable. I'll be showing you, again, how to add a uh, custom field and, and a custom dialog here in a little bit. Uh, it features resources and resource grouping, and I'll tell you about that here in a second. Uh, it also features uh, different forms of data binding. You can work with it in unbound mode. You can bind it to a database using ADO.NET data sets. Uh, or you can just even bind it to business objects if you're using an ORM like Open Access, for example. And it also features uh, the ability to create recurring appointments and uh, create exceptions uh, to those recurrences. Uh, and you can also import and export uh, your calendar into the iCal format, uh, which is one of the most popular formats, and you can use that to import, uh, import it into many different calendar programs. And finally, um, uh, it features support for localization. So some of the views that RAD Scheduler supports are the day view, which is this view here in the top left. It's just a single day over a 24-hour period. It also features a week view, which is this one here on the top right. And as you can see, it's the different days of the week and the 24 hour period for each of those days. And then it also features a month view. And in the month view, it's, you know, it's just that, just a month view, all 30, 31 days in the month. And then finally, the newest addition to Rad Scheduler is the timeline view. And that's where you can see your appointments over a period of days and just a nice horizontal bar format. It's very easy to read. <clears throat> uh, another feature of RAD Scheduler is resource grouping. And this allows you to group appointments based on their specific resource type that's been assigned to them. So as you can see here on the screenshot, it's current, the RAD Scheduler is currently in timeline view. And here are these different appointments that are showing in the timeline view are actually grouped by the different rooms that they may take place in. So now that you've uh, learned a little bit about the features of RAD Scheduler and exactly what RAD Scheduler is, let's go ahead and jump over to my virtual machine here and take a look at some of the quick start demos that come with the installation of the RAD controls for WinForms. 
So here I am, I have the, the scheduler section open, so let's take a look at the first uh, look example. I'll go ahead and launch that. And my, my screen resolution's a little bit low, so uh, it's going to cut the bottom off a little bit, but uh, I, I think you'll be able to understand what I'm doing here. But anyways, here's the rad scheduler. Uh, here at the top, I can actually click these different tabs to switch between the views. So here's day view, I can switch to week view, month view. And I also have the option of, uh, let's see, I can click this checkbox and remove the weekends if I don't want to see those. Say so I have a rad scheduler that's focusing on work, work weeks in my application. Uh, I also have the ability to click and drag appointments. And if I want to edit the appointments, I can simply double click them and it'll pop up an edit appointment dialog. And I can just, you know, change all of these different fields, change the time span. And I can even click this recurrence button and I can create a recurring appointment. So say I want this appointment that I just opened up to recur every two days. I can just set that, click OK, and then click OK again. And here you see that from iPhone to Azure appointment is actually showing up every other day now as I scroll through here. And uh, uh, if we want to create an appointment, you can do that fairly easily as well. You just need to select the area that you would like the appointment to take place in. So let's go ahead and select the, the 10 to 11 o'clock. So I'll select that, right click, and here in my context menu, I can just select new appointment. It brings up that same dialog. I'll just go ahead and type hello into the subject and click OK. And there's my new appointment uh, that's been added to the RAD scheduler for me. So it's pretty easy to use and it has a very familiar interface since it's uh, very much like the Outlook calendar. Let's go ahead and close that demo out. Uh, let's take a look at grouping now. So here's, here's the grouping demo. Uh, as you can see here at the top it's showing a picture of our different resources. Our resources in this particular schedule scheduler are actually people. And so if I want to uh, there's a few appointments in here, down at the bottom. Again, my resolution's a little bit low, but here, here's a, uh, an appointment that has been assigned to Alan Smith. So if I double click this appointment, as you can see here in the resource dropdown, it contains my different set of resources, and Alan Smith is the selected resource, so this, re this uh, particular item is currently grouped be below Alan Smith. And if I want to switch the resource, uh, I can simply click and drag this appointment into a different resource grouping and if I double click this again you can see now that the resource has been changed to Ann Dodsworth. And I can uh, simply change it in here as well. So I'll change it back to uh, Alan Smith and that appointment should jump right back over to that section. So that's uh, pretty much the basic functionality of RAD Scheduler. And I encourage you uh, to download the RAD controls for WinForms uh, if you don't have it already and take a look at all these different demos. And uh, just as a, a little side note, uh, while you're working with RAD Scheduler, all of these demos include full source code. So if you just click this tab right here, the C-sharp code or the VB.net code tab, you can see what the source code looks like and use that uh, as maybe the basis of building one of your applications to use RAD Scheduler. So, so that's pretty much those examples. So I'm going to switch back over to PowerPoint once again. So let's talk about the components that make up RAD Scheduler. Well, RAD Scheduler actually consists of three separate controls. Here at the top of this, or rather here in the middle, is the actual RAD Scheduler itself. And this is the calendar in which you can see the appointments, you can click and drag appointments, and you can see the schedule for those appointments. And if you would like, you can just use that component completely by itself. Uh, but if you would like to allow your u users to, to navigate the schedule, then you can use this other component called the RAD Scheduler Navigator, which is here at the top. And this is where, this is the control that features the day view, uh, week view, different view tabs, uh, you can navigate between the different dates. And finally, uh, the third control that's available is the scheduler binding data source. And that's the control you'll use if you want to bind your RAD scheduler to business objects or uh, directly to a database. And so those are the three components that make up RAD scheduler. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at a demo of building an application to use those components. So I'm going to switch back over to VirtualBox, 
And as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this project and set it as the startup project. I have a basic project that's just an empty form. Uh, it's just you know a new, brand new project. So from the toolbox, go ahead and click that and wait for it to populate. It's running a little bit slow. Again, I'm running in a virtual machine. So I'll go ahead and uh, minimize all these different sections. And here are all the rad controls for WinForms. And so I'm going to drag out a RAD Scheduler Navigator, which is our navigation control. And once it places that in here, I'll go ahead and dock it to the top. So as you can see, this is the control that contains those different navigation tabs. So I'll go ahead and come over here. And I'm going to dock this to the top. And now from the toolbox, I'm going to drag out a RAD Scheduler. And then once that uh, comes into our application, I'll just go ahead and dock that to fill. And so uh, the next step we need to take is we actually need to link these two controls together. We need to tell the the navigator uh, what scheduler it's going to be what scheduler it's going to be navigating uh, with. And to do that, you just click the smart tag, and then there's this associate scheduler uh, drop down, and you can just select any scheduler uh, on your form, and we'll just go ahead and select that one that we added. So that's basically it. And this is a basically a RAD scheduler in unbound mode. We've not bound this to any data, and it works completely fine in this situation. Uh, you can access uh, appointments just by accessing uh, the appointments property on RAD scheduler itself. And it also features a few different things over here. So let's say, for example, I want to change uh, the default view. Well, I can come over here and set the active view type. Currently, it's day. But I can also, you know, start my program out with it in week mode and switch it to month mode. So it's pretty simple API. It's very easy to use. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at um, adding some resources to the scheduler. So to do that, I'm going to right click and jump into the code behind. And resources, again, are, uh, if you don't remember, are in this demo, they're the things that I can actually group my appointments by if I would like to. So let's go ahead and add a few of those. So I'll go ahead and come here in the constructor. And the type for that is actually just resource. And just create a new one of these. And we need to associate an ID with that. And then we can also set a name for that. We'll do uh, resources that are different rooms. And we can also set a color on this resource. So I'll go ahead and set the color for this one to be red. And then finally, we need to add this resource to the collection of resources on Rad Scheduler. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste this code and create two more resources. So I'll go ahead and erase the declaration there. Change the ID on this one. And let's just make this one room 305. And then we'll change the ID of this resource as well. And we can change this one to room 207. So that's basically it. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the application real quick and see this in action. So once it uh, comes up here, I'm just going to create a brand new appointment. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll right click and select new appointment. And when this dialog comes up, I can actually see all three of those resources here now. So if I select one of those and, you know, again, just type a simple subject and click OK. So there's my new appointment. Well, what if I want to group by resources? I want, I want to have that cool functionality where I can see what rooms each of these appointments are going to take place in. Well, that's pretty easy as well. So I'll come back over here into the constructor. And to set that up, I'm just going to simply Again, access the RAD scheduler, and I'm going to access its group type property. And I'll set that to be resource. And then I can also set how many resources I want to see per view. I only have three resources currently, so it's pretty easy to set that. So I'll go ahead and set RAD scheduler dot active view, which means the current view and scope that the user is focused on. And then I'll set resources per view to be three. So now when I run this application, we should see uh, those three different resource grouping sections. 
So there they are. I, I forgot to change the color, so they're all red currently. So we'll go go back and change the color. Uh, but one thing I want you to notice, uh, it's kind of a little gotcha you need to pay attention to, is I had actually set this up to show three resources at a time. But if I switch the view, you'll notice that it jumped back down to two, which is the default value. This is because uh, these views are actually maintained separately. And I, I set the active view property on the RAD scheduler which only set it for the active view, which was the day view. So we actually need to go back and set up an event handler that will apply that as our user changes the views that we're using. So to do that, I'm going to do rad scheduler one dot active view changed, create an event handler for that. And then inside of this is actually where I'm going to set the resources per view. So now it should stay at three resources per view. And let's also go ahead and change the colors on these two so they're not all red. I'll go ahead and change this one to green. Oops. And let's change this one to be blue. <clears throat> so now when I run this, we should see those different colors. Uh, so there they are. And when I switch between the different views, it stays at three groupings per view now. So uh, again, I want to show you uh, a little emphasis on this of how to work with resource groupings. So I'll go ahead and create a new appointment and as you can see it's currently set for room 701 automatically because that's the area I selected and when I click OK it creates that appointment here but if I want to switch the resource I can simply drag it into a different section and when I open it up again I can see that it is now assigned re resource room 207. So that's pretty much the basics of working with RAD Scheduler and working with resource grouping. Now, the API is real simple, it's real easy to work with, and there's a lot of things that you can discover uh, when you're working with it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to PowerPoint once again. And so the next thing I want to talk about is data binding. Uh, I know a lot of you probably use databases in your applications, and there are actually two different ways you can bind data to the RAD Scheduler. And uh, to bind this data to RAD Scheduler, you're actually going to use that third component that we haven't used yet, the Scheduler Binding Data Source. And this object, uh, we can actually bind it to a database and create ADO.NET datasets at, at a most basic level. And we can also bind it to business objects if we want. And this gives us the capability to use ORMs or class objects, uh, etc. So when we use Scheduler Binding Data Source, it actually allows us to do codeless data binding. We don't have to write any code to do this. It, inside of the Visual Studio Designer, uh, that particular object will allow us to display these dialogues uh, where we can create mappings between our database objects and the objects that are used internally inside of RAD Scheduler. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back over to my virtual machine and take a look at setting that up. So I'll go ahead and switch the example I'm working on. I'm going to close this out and close that out. And let's uh, do the database example. So I'll set that as the startup project. And this is again a very basic project. I've just uh, gone ahead in advance and set up that initial RAD scheduler, the navigator, and I've added a save button at the bottom. And there's currently no code for any of this, so we're going to set all of that up right now. So the first thing we need to do for this is from the toolbox, I'm going to drag out that scheduler binding data source object. So I'll drag that in there and as you can see it's added it to the component bin at the bottom and to bind it to our data source I'm going to click the smart tag and expand this choose data source drop down and it actually has two different sections here. I need to create two separate mappings one for appointments and one for the resources that are going to be used in RAD Scheduler. So I'll go ahead and click this combo box and I'm going to select add project data source I'm going to choose database. And uh, before I bind this to the database, let's uh, jump over here to SQL Management Studio. Here's the database I'm going to be binding to. It's the scheduler data database. And this database is actually an example database included with your download of RAD controls for WinForms. And I'll go ahead and show you where you can get a copy of that. And that's going to be located on my computer, C, inside your program files, and then in your Telerik folder and then inside of the RAD controls for WinForms installation folder and then in the examples folder and then there's a folder called data sources 
and this contains all the different data sources used in that quick start framework that I showed you. And this is the database I'm using right now, the scheduler data database. So this database contains three different tables. It contains an appointments table. And so the columns for this table are actually just, you don't actually have to use all the, all the uh, things that are provided in Rad Scheduler. You can use a, a subset of the items that Rad Scheduler works with when working with these objects. So for appointments, I have just the simple essentials that I need, like summary, start and end date, uh, recurrence rule, location, and description. And I also have a table that contains resources. This uh, particular table contains just a name and an image field, pretty basic. And then I have a link table that allows me to basically assign uh, many resources to a single appointment if I find that's necessary in my application. So those are the three basic tables we'll be working with. So I'll go ahead and minimize that. So I'm going to create a new connection and I'll go ahead and do localhost and I'm using an SQL Express database. And then from this drop down I'm going to select that scheduler data database and click OK. And then I'll click Next. And so it's going to pull back all those tables from the database. Should be here in just a second. A couple more seconds to go, it looks like. Again, I'm running on a virtual machine, so it's a little bit slow. So here are our tables. We're going to use all of these tables. So I'll just go ahead and click that tables checkbox. And let's rename this data set to scheduler data set. And I'll click finish. And that's going to generate this object right here, the scheduler data set dot XSD. So uh, we didn't actually really do anything with this yet. I just used it as a tool in which I could generate my data set with. So I actually need to come over here and make a few modifications to my data set. So I'm going to double click this file and we'll take a look at it in the data set designer. I'm going to delete these uh, default relationships it created and I'll recreate those. Uh, but the first thing we need to do now is to update a few things on this ID column. This ID column is actually auto-generated by our database. Uh, so uh, just to be careful, I'm going to set this auto-increment seed. Let's see, I'll set that to 1, and then I'll set the step to 1, and we'll make sure that this is a read-only property. Okay. And so the next thing we need to do from the toolbox, I'm going to drag out a relation. And for this relation, it's going to be between the appointments table and the itself. And the key column is going to be ID, and the foreign key column is going to be master event ID. And the reason we need a relationship like this is because uh, it's possible to create recurrences in Rad Scheduler. And uh, as part of those recurrences, you can actually click a single item in them and create an exception to that to that recurrence rule. And that's when it will attempt to create a new appointment in your database. And that appointment needs to be able to reference that master appointment that defines the recurrence. And that's what this is going to allow us to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to be called appointments, appointments. And then I'll set this to use both relation and foreign key constraint. And uh, go ahead and click OK, and that relationship should be good to go. And the next relationship we need to add is going to be between the appointments table and the appointments resources table. So I've got to change the name of this to appointments, appointments resources. And then uh, for the first table, we'll use appointments and ID. And then we'll use appointments resources and appointment ID. So that's already set. And then finally, we need to set foreign key constraint only. And then we'll go ahead and leave everything else as its defaults. So this is our basic data set that we need to work with. So I'll go ahead and click Save, and now we can close out of that. So to bind that data set to our uh, binding source, I'm just going to again click that Smart tag and choose my data source. And then now that I have that data set, I can actually just click these little drop downs on this tree and select Scheduler Data Set. And it's automatically generated that data set and a binding source for me. So the data member of that data set I'm going to be using is that appointments table. So I'll go ahead and type appointments instead of this choose data member text box. 
And now that I've done that, I can click Edit Appointment Mapping. And this is going to pop up that dialog that allows me to map things in my database to the RAD scheduler. So as you can see, these are all the fields that it's pulling from my database. So I'm going to set Start. Uh, we'll set the End. Duration. I don't think I have duration. We don't need to worry about that property. I'll set Summary. See Description. Location. And then I'm pretty sure I don't have any of these properties. Then down to Unique ID. That'll be just the ID of the appointment in the database. Background ID. And I don't think I have Status ID. Uh, recurrence rule and master event and that's that's pretty much all we need to set at a most basic level so I'll go ahead and click save and close and then the next thing we need to do is populate that resources combo box so to, to do that I'm actually going to bind it to that scheduler data set binding source that was created for us and then for the data member for this I'm going to use the resources uh, table and now I can click edit resource mapping and as you can see it's pulled back all of those different fields from that resources table and our data set. So I'm going to use the ID and I'll use the name as well. And I'll just leave the image blank for now. So I'll go ahead and click save and close. And that's pretty much the basics for mapping our data source to our table. Uh, now is where we actually do need to write a little bit of code because we need to populate our data source with data from the database. So I'm going to jump into the code behind here and I actually have just some simple code that I'm going to paste in that takes care of, of populating our data set for us. Let's go ahead and resolve these types. So what this is doing, uh, if you haven't worked with ADO.NET before, it's actually creating a table, dot, a table adapter for each of those tables inside of our data set. <clears throat> and then it calls uh, fill, and it, you pass in that scheduler data set and the table that you want to fill with data. And it's actually just going to pull back all the data for that particular data for that particular table from the database and so it's going to populate our data set. And so that's what all these different uh, blocks of code are doing. So uh, the next thing I have, I want to paste in uh, some code for this save button so we can save back our modifications to the database. And this is kind of a, a large chunk of code. I'm actually going to be posting uh, this entire example to my blog uh, shortly after this webinar is over. So. Uh, if you don't understand what this code is doing right now, uh, feel free to jump on over to my blog and I'll tell you uh, the address again at the end of the webinar and you can download all of these examples and take a look at the code for yourself. Uh, but what this is doing is uh, when I click that save button, it's actually just uh, getting the changes that were made to my, my different data set tables uh, that were made by Rad Scheduler and based on those changes it commits the the uh, changes back to the database and saves uh, you know all the modifications the user might have made so again uh, feel free to check this block out on my on my blog that's uh, a little bit long so I gotta close that up and let's take a look at the application in action now and I I've already determined that I've I've made a common beginner's mistake so we're we're not actually gonna be able to save any data to the database so uh, once this opens up, if I if I were to create an appointment, which I'll do now, and I'll just type hello into the subject again and click OK, uh, it's not actually going to save anything to my database. So if I run this again, it's not going to pull any data back out. See, that appointment is missing. Well, I made a common mistake, and uh, like before, where I had to bind this navigator to my scheduler, I also need to make sure to bind this binding source to my my scheduler as well and you can do that through the smart tag and you'll do that through this choose data source drop down and I'll go ahead and select scheduler binding data source and that that'll set everything up for us so now I should be able to create appointments and save them to the database so once this pops up again I'll go ahead and create a new appointment so I'll just select that area right click and select new appointment and we'll just call this test appointment and click OK. And now I'll click Save. And that should save that uh, particular item to our database. And uh, before we do that, I want to show you that this resource uh, section has been populated as well. It's actually pulling these different laptop resources from the database. So I'll go ahead and click Save again and close out. And now when we run this application, it should pull back everything from the database. And 
here's our test appointment, so it worked. Uh, so that's uh, that's basic data binding uh, when you want to bind directly to a database. Let's take a look real quick at binding to business objects. So I'm going to close out this example, and I have a third project over here I want to take a look at. Go ahead and set this as the startup project. And this is, again, a, a basic example. Um, it contains a navigator and just a rad scheduler. And it currently contains uh, no code in the code behind. Uh, but where it does contain code is I've actually uh, gone ahead and created a few different business objects. I've created one for appointments and one for resources. So this appointments business object actually contains the I notify property changed uh, implementation and this will tell uh, tell rad scheduler when this particular object has a property that's been changed so that the rad scheduler can update uh, accordingly. So let's take a look at the fields for this. Uh, I actually have properties created for each of these fields and so as you can see these fields are the basic ones that we were actually using in our data set a minute ago. Uh, the start, end date, summary, description, uh, you know, all the basic fields that would comprise an appointment. And so let's take a look at the resource business object now. So this object is again implementing the I notify property changed interface. And for the fields for this object, I've just simply created an ID and a name. And again, uh, this has properties for each of those fields as well so that we can access them uh, when we're doing the data binding. And then so I've also created a third object as well. This is called the My Repository. And this object actually just contains a list of appointments and a list of resources. And I have properties to those two items as well so that I'm actually going to be binding to this My Repository object. And inside of the constructor, I've actually just auto, like by hand generated a few different resources that we can bind to. And I've generated a few appointments and code in advance just to show you a little bit about how this works. So I'll go ahead and close close out all these business object files. And now to set up this binding once again from the toolbox, I'm going to drag out a scheduler binding data source. And on its smart tag, I'm going to choose, I'm going to select add project data source. And this time I'm going to select object <clears throat> and click next. And then let's go ahead and expand down to those business objects I had created. And I'm going to select the my, Repo my Repository object, click Next, and click Finish. And the data member I'm going to be using in that object is, again, uh, going to be the Appointments data member. So now when I click Edit Appointment Mapping, it's going to pull back all of those uh, different fields or different properties inside of that particular object. So let's go ahead and map these again. I'm going to map Start to Start, End, uh, Duration. We don't have that. Summary, Description, map location, um, let's see, unique ID, that'll be ID, background, we don't have that value, recurrence rule, master event ID, and let's map resources as well. We'll just, we'll set this resources property first, and then uh, here we should be able to uh, go ahead and type this in manually, it doesn't look like it picked it up, so I'll type resource ID in here and then uh, we'll go ahead and leave the, everything else blank. So I'll go ahead and click save and close. And for this resource section now I'm just gonna click this drop down and select the binding source that was created automatically for us for the, our repository. And for the data member for this I'm just gonna type resources so it pulls back that resources collection and click edit resource mapping. And for the ID I'm gonna select ID and then for name, I'll just select name and click save and close. And so that's pretty much it for the binding. So the last, uh, the final step we need to take is to actually create that repository object and apply it to our scheduler. And to do that, I'm just going to simply create a new instance of it. And then on the, uh, let's see, on the my repository binding source object that was generated for us, just going to set the data source property uh, to to that repository. And then uh, one more thing I forgot to do again, I need to actually uh, set that scheduler binding data source on a RAD scheduler. So I'm going to click the smart tag and choose the data source as that scheduler binding data source. So I'll click save and I'll click run and hopefully I got everything up and running. And this should pull back those 
appointments that I had generated in code. So as you can see, there's two appointments that's pulled back, and when I click on these appointments, here in the resource dropdown, I can actually see uh, those different resources, or I can see that there's been a resource that's been associated with this particular object. And this uh, this time, again, is using business objects uh, that you can uh, probably create with an ORM, or you can just use uh, different class objects in your application. So it's pretty simple to set both of those up. So let's go ahead and jump back over to PowerPoint once again. So there's a few different ways you can customize Rad Scheduler. Uh, say, for example, you want to have a custom field, and I'm going to show you how to set that up in a minute. Uh, but say you have like an email field. Uh, Rad Scheduler doesn't provide support for an email field by default. So that's something you would have to go in and add yourself. And we actually support customizing uh, all the dialogues you would need to be able to do something like that. Uh, we also support customization of context menus and we support full localization. So as you can see here in the screenshot to the right, I've actually localized the context menu to be in Spanish. So let's let's customize Rad Scheduler by adding a custom field to our database and creating a custom, di custom edit appointment dialog so that our users can uh, uh, input data for that field. So we're going to go through this in a series of five steps. And so I'll be jumping back and forth between the slide and the virtual machine to go over this. So for step one, I'm actually going to add a custom field to the data source. So let's go ahead and do that now. Jump back over to the virtual machine. Let's, uh, we're going we're gonna to be using the database for this. So uh, I'm going to need to add a custom field to this appointments table. So I'll go ahead and uh, open this in design view. And then once this opens up, uh, let's let's create a new field for email. So I'm going to type email in here. And for the data type, I'll just do an, an, an nvarcar. Let's see. And we'll allow users to enter up to 255 characters. So uh, save that. And let me make sure uh, to cl let me clear out all the appointments in here if I have any. And so now our appointments table is ready. Now we can uh, access that email field. So uh, the next step we need to take is we actually need to update our data set. So I'm going to uh, set this database project as our primary project once again and close out all of these different dialogues. And I'm going to open back up that scheduler data set that we were working with previously. So for this, I actually need to add that email field to the data set. So I'm going to right click and configure this. And then let's go ahead and open up the query builder. And if I scroll down, you can see that it's picked up that new field we added. So I'll go ahead and check it and click OK. And now I can click Finish. And it's actually uh, generated a relationship for us. I don't, I don't really need that relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and remove it. And click Save. And that's that's pretty much it. Our data, our uh, email field is now available in our database, and it's available in our data source. So that's step one. So let's go ahead and take a look at step two. For step two, we need to create a custom appointment class. Uh, well, this is because we have that new field, so we need uh, the appointment class that Rad Scheduler uses internally to provide support for that field. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our virtual machine once again. And to create this custom field, I'm actually going to create a brand new class. So I'll right click the project, select add class. And we're going to call this the appointment with email class. So once the dialog pops up, I'll go ahead and type that in. That should be up here in a second. Again, I'm on a virtual machine, so it's a little bit slow. So I'll go ahead and type appointment, appointment with email and click add. And so for this object, I'm just going to make it a public class. And it's going to inherit from the appointment object, which is the object that Rad Scheduler actually uses uh, when you use just the basic default appointments. So inside of this, I'm going to create a field for email. And I also need to create a constructor for this. 
and I need to make sure to call the base constructor on that appointment object we're inheriting from. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and generate a property for our email field. And I also need to make sure, uh, let's see, go ahead and expand the set property. I also need to make sure to call the on property changed event of appointment. And this again is uh, part of that I, notif I notify property changed interface that will notify our UI if any properties change internally in this particular class. So this is our appointment with email. Uh, pretty simple to create. So let's jump back over to PowerPoint once again. And for step three, we need to create a custom appointment factory. Well, Rat Scheduler doesn't actually know that that appointment object we created exists. We need to create an object that provides Rat Scheduler with the means of creating it. And that's essentially what a factory is. So I'm going to jump back over to uh, Visual Studio once again. And this time I'm going to right click and select Add new class and this class is going to be called the appointment with email factory and for this class it's going to be public once again <clears throat> and it's going to implement the i appointment factory interface so I'll go ahead and resolve that type and implement the interface and uh, it contains a single method, create new appointment, and all we need to do for this is return a new instance of our appointment with email. So that's a factory class. It's pretty simple. Uh, it just provides the means of uh, allowing Rad Scheduler to generate appointments because it's working with this simple interface now. <clears throat> so now that we have our appointment with email factory, we need to actually set uh, the RAD scheduler up to use this factory. So I'm going to jump into the code behind for our primary form. If you remember, I have one of the scheduler binding data sources on it. So I'm actually going to be interacting with that a little bit and the RAD scheduler itself. So for RAD scheduler, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to access that. And there's actually an appointment factory property on that. And I can use this to swap out the default appointment factory with my new custom appointment factory. So I'm going to use the appointment with email factory. And I also need to uh, let the scheduler binding data source know about this new appointment factory as well. And on that, I'm going to uh, use its event provider dot appointment factory property. And we'll set that to a new appointment with email factory as well. So that's pretty much it. That's our appointment factory. We've created our appointment. We've created our factory that generates appointments. And now the RAD scheduler and its binding source are going to be generating appointments of those types, of that type. So let's jump back over to PowerPoint once again. So the fourth step we need to take is to create a custom appointment dialog. Well, our RAD scheduler is working with those appointments now. It, it can see that, that new email field internally, but our users need a way to be able to input data into that field as well. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's switch back over to Visual Studio once again. And to get started doing this, I'm going to right click once again and select Add, New Item this time. And I'll select Windows Forms. I'm going to do an inherited form. And this form is going to be called the Appointment with Email Edit Form. Click Add. And this is actually going to pop up a dialog that allows me to browse to an assembly that contains the form I want to inherit from. So I'll go ahead and click the Browse button. And the, the uh, assembly I want to inherit from is actually one of the Telerik assemblies. So I'll go ahead and browse to the installation folder of the Telerik controls, Rad controls for WinForms instead of the Ben folder. And I'm going to inherit from the Telerik.WinControls.Scheduler assembly. So I'll select that and click Open. And this pulls back all of the dialogues that I can inherit from. And the one I want to use is this Edit Appointment dialog. So I'll select that and click OK. So it's going to generate our form for us. And as you can see, uh, this is actually that Edit Appointment dialog. But now we have the capability to edit this dialog and add some custom, uh, custom uh, UI to it. So I'm going to, from the toolbox, I'm going to drag out a red label. And this is going to be the label for our email field. 
And I'm also going to drag out a red text box. So let's find that here. And this is going to be where the user inputs that their email address. So I'll go ahead and resize this as well. And let's move the red label uh, right below that. And I'm going to change the text for this to be email. And then for the red text box, I'll just drag that right below there as well and resize it. And let's delete the default text. And then let's give it a, a decent name. We'll call it txt email. So, and that's our new custom UI. So now that we have that field, we need to assign values from our appointments to that field. So I'm gonna jump into the code behind and enable this uh, custom form with the capability to do that. And so to do that, I'm actually gonna override three different methods. And the first method I'm gonna override is the load settings from event method. So I'll leave this base call and this method actually gets an I event passed into it. And this event that gets passed in is actually going to be that appointment object that was created by our appointment with email factory. So the first thing I need to do is cast this back to an appointment with email. So I'll go ahead and create this object equals source event as appointment with email. Messed up my case there. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and. Okay. Our appointment with email equals source event as appointment with email. So that's our object. And the next thing we need to do is check to see if that value is null. And if it's not null, then we can we know that it's an appointment with email and we can assign the email property from it uh, I'm sorry we can assign uh, that text box that's in our form the text email text box we can assign the email property from our appointment with email to that text box and so when this method gets called our form will be populated with that uh, the email address contained in that appointment so that's that's pretty much it for that, uh, the load settings from event method. Uh, the next thing we need to do is when the user clicks the OK or this, the, the save button on this dialog, we need to save the values that they've input into the form back to the appointment. And to do that, we're going to override the apply settings to event method. And for this, I'm going to leave that base call there once again, because uh, we still have those other properties available uh, in our form and in our appointment uh, and uh, this is where we're going to add the capability to save that new email address back to our appointment and when it calls this base method it's going to save the rest of the default properties uh, from an appointment back to that appointment as well. So for this uh, let's again I'm going to cast that object so var appointment with email equals target event this time as appointment with email and then if appointment with email is not equal to null, then we can set the appointment with email dot email equals text email dot text. So this is again assigning that text box uh, back to our appointment with email. And then finally we need to override one more property or one more method. And this is going to be the internal create new event method. And for this, we're just going to return a new appointment with email. So it's a little bit like a factory. Uh, it's just doing it internally in this dialog. So that's uh, that's pretty much the dialog. Uh, now that we have the dialog, we need to tell Rad Scheduler to show it when we begin editing appointments. So to do that, I'm going to want once again jump into the code behind for our form, and I'm going to set up an event handler for this. <clears throat> And that's going to be the, let's see, the appointment edit dialog showing event. So I'll access the RAD scheduler, and there's an appointment edit dialog showing event that we're going to use. So I'll go ahead and create an event handler for that. And inside of this event handler is actually where I'm going to create, I'm going to instantiate our custom edit form, and I'm going to uh, tell RAD scheduler to show that instead. 
So I'm going to create a local instance of it here so that we're not recreating it every time and we can uh, speed up our program a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and resolve this type and this is going to be our appointment dialog and we'll just set that uh, that field to null for now and when the user first opens the appointment dialog we're going to check to see if that value is null and if it's null we'll go ahead and create this uh, right then so appointment dialog equals new appointment with email edit form and then finally the event handlers that get passed into this particular event uh, there's an appointment edit dialog property on that and this property is actually where we're going to set to our new custom appointment dialog so now when we right click and edit appointments uh, our new custom dialog should show up so that's pretty much it for um, adding that custom dialog so I'm going to jump back over to PowerPoint once again and let's take a look at our final step so for our final step we need to map the custom field that we just created that email field we need to map that to our data source so let's jump back over here once again and uh, before we were using those nice dialogues that were in the Visual Studio Designer to map our properties well those are predefined dialogues so our email field that we added isn't going to show up in there so we need to map it and code instead so to do that I'm going to jump in here into the constructor once again and just set up my custom mapping here. And for this, I'm just going to create an appointment mapping info. I messed up my case here. Go ahead and resolve this type. Go ahead and resolve it now. And we'll just call this appointment mapping info and we're going to retrieve the appointment mapping info from our scheduler binding data source so from scheduler binding data source dot event provider dot mapping as appointment mapping info so this object is now the appointment mapping info object from our binding source so now we can use this to add a new mapping to our email field so I'm going to access this uh, object and then and it's it's mappings property I'm going to call add and I'm going to create a new scheduler mapping and this object takes the property that I want to map and it takes the data source property that I want to map it to so uh, for both of these and our and our uh, and our appointment it's called email and in our data source it's that email field and that table and so that's pretty much it our email field is now mapped so when I click run in this application and hopefully I typed everything correctly it should come up and I should now have the ability to add and save email email addresses back to the database so I'll go ahead and right click this and select new appointment it's gonna use that custom event handler and it created an instance of our custom edit appointment dialog. Go ahead and call this uh, my appointment. And for my email address, I'll just go ahead and type in my Telerik email address and click OK. And I'll click Save. And if I open this back up, as you can see, it's picked up that email address, it saved it. So I'm going to exit out and we'll run this again uh, just to do one more test to make sure that it actually pulls that email address back from the database. So I'll go ahead and double click this and there's my email address that successfully pulled it back from the database. So that's pretty much it for adding a custom dialog and adding a little customization to Rad Scheduler. And again, uh, I have a few extra projects here that I'm, I unfortunately don't have time to show you today, but I'm going to be posting these on my blog. And uh, this first project here, the exporting project, that'll show you how to import and export uh, the iCalendar format using Rad Scheduler. The second project will show you a little bit about working with grouping. It's actually that first example I showed you about setting up grouping, so you can take a look at that if you want. And then localization, I've written a, an example to show you how to localize Rad Scheduler. And then finally, if you need a custom context menu, uh, this example will show you how to set that up. So let's jump back over to PowerPoint once again. 
And so uh, that's pretty much the that's pretty much it for the basics of Rad Scheduler. Uh, if you're interested in, in digging a little bit further into it, we have several learning resources available on the Telerik website. Uh, first off, there's Telerik TV, and that's available at tv.telerik.com. And uh, there, there's actually several videos related to Rad Schedulers uh, and uh, several of our other product lines as well, if you're interested in learning how to use them. Uh, we also have online demos available at demos.telerik.com. And finally, all of our documentation is available online. And, uh, this contains all of the latest updates and information uh, specific to each of our controls, and you can access that at telerik.com slash help. And for all questions, uh, you should just start at telerik.com slash support, and that should get you to where you need to go. I hope you've enjoyed learning about everything I've shown you about RAD Scheduler today. Thanks for watching.